Welcome to Revive Busy Podcast. This is September, and again, we are entering more into this month of Recovery Month and World Suicide Awareness Day. Um, I just want to give a little insight to those who are watching, those who are listening. Um, suicide is one of those things that fluctuate in the stats, but I'd like to keep us updated on some of the new stats. Um, in the United States, um, it has, um, suicide in the United States has increased by over 1,000 deaths. Suicide rates increased 37% between 2000 to 2018 and decreased 5% from 2018 to 2020. However, rates nearly returned to their peak in 2021. Um, one of the other statistics when we think about suicide and how it, what's impact uh, not only on our communities here but around the world, um, uh, there's uh, some statistics that mention that um, some of these countries below are have some of the highest suicide rates in the world. Uh, Guyana, um, these Estuan, Watney. South Korea are just some of the few countries that are are at a higher rate when it comes to suicide in the statistics. In the other side, other side of the coin, um, when it comes to overdoses um, in the United States, overdose decreased by two percent from twelve months ending at ending in twenty twenty one to twelve months ending at twenty twenty two, from one hundred. 7,573 to 105,452 from the CDC's recent reports. However, you know, data, um, um, each life is too much for when it comes to these, um, this area. When it comes to suicide, when it comes to overdose, we can, we could say there's not enough resources. We could, we could, we could say a lot of things, but, um, like the old cliche, one life is too many. I do believe this data just gives us a kind of uh, broader understanding. But just like um, like it was mentioned, you know, suicide dipped down a little bit, but it does come back up. It's still a reoccurring problem. It's, it's a topic that a lot of us don't like to talk about, especially those who have lost someone. Um, and the data can be overwhelmingly discouraged. As trends increase and decrease, we're just asking the question, why? Did we do anything differently? Did we do anything positively? How can we make things better? Whether it's in our home, our communities, wherever we are. Um, last month, we really did focus on communities. And um, I felt that conversation does very much connect is can be the in, um, the connection point for a lot of these topics we talk in Revive Ministries as lo- as though e- despite we not um, uh, even with the name it sounds very much that it proselytized the idea is um, it's more of an outreach and uh, when I started this ministry I thought there was a lot of emphasis on the physical uh, side of uh, outreach when it comes to reaching out to those who are struggling with access to care and I totally am I commend those who are out there doing that hard work however I do feel there was a gap when it came to our own mental health when we, when we talk about people who are struggling with substance use issues and and all these other aspects so the Bible ministry started off really focusing on that um you know i mentioned this because uh, this month was one of the highly critical months when i first started just doing events locally and i remember having a, a suicide awareness month uh, funny enough those who are in florida um i had to reschedule because of a hurricane and we just recently re- uh, experienced Hurricanes are very uncertain. Uh, sometimes uh, it seems like a lot of fear is involved in it. Um, and it, the idea is that we want to be prepared. And I feel 
uh, whether you're a church faith-based or not you know i do feel there's um, the emphasis on taking care of oneself when it comes to physically exercising eating right sleeping but a lot of um there i feel that that even though it's not um nothing is completely um i would say improved about uh in the sense that of how we in how we communicate the these topics but um going back to this month uh one more day um sometimes that is can be pivotal in someone's recovery can be pivotal in someone still being alive today um suicide is preventable in, in, the, in the aspects that is not something that um you know the idea is asking for help um but it's a lot harder that barrier that distance from the individual wanting or feeling that they're able to ha have help and actually saying those three words that i need help is a lot of times minimized because the words seem simple to say but given the context of what people go through each and every day in their communities in their homes sometimes those three words are the heaviest ones to ask um this month we do pay tribute to those struggling with substance use disorder recognizing and also recognizing recognizing the ripple effects suicide has on our communities um today i will be sharing my own thoughts on this uh, we have other guests coming in later weeks and as we're in the second week and as we continue to try to remember i do want to say as a disclaimer if you are in crisis please seek appropriate professional help immediately the new uh new wish 988 suicide crisis lifeline is available for those in the states wherever you are in the country in the world find what resources work if you're connected to a faith-based organization and you feel connected and you feel like you can ask those three words i need help i do encourage you to reach out to pastor reach out to your elders read out to the church leadership um ask for help um uh, i think um to start off and i said this in my uh, last week episode with tanya um uh, robin williams growing up comedian i always felt so so happy and i remember later on when i when the tragic tragic news of his um completion of suicide I, I remember i remember this reading this quote and it kind of uh, kind of i think defines sometimes how our how it can feel when you are fe when you're feeling this low in your life um i used to think the worst thing in life was to end up alone it's not the worst thing in life is to end up with people who make you feel alone uh, a lot of times it's not just it's not about how close physically people are about how close they are in actuality um there is unfortunately a trend i i see or at least i have felt personally of appearing that you're doing well as opposed to actually doing well um, uh, there's something also interesting about the idea of time you know we never have enough of it um, never and we can never find enough of it even though it's fixed I, I remember just thinking about my the times I, I I spend with my wife and we can have a four day week and we have a lot of time and feel like we have no time and then we can have just half a day and feel like it was that we had a lot of time so I, I think a lot of times when we think about the idea of connection and then uh, I, I tend to say you know don't forget your context your own context so if i am someone who would you know had certain experience in my life i i, I don't want to erase that because it does it does doesn't benefit me when i'm when i'm trying to connect with others and uh, you know this this quote kind of um rips into the idea that a lot of times we generalize of what we want what we may think may help us 
um, you can have, be around a thousand people. You can be around a, a, a lot of friends per se, but you feel utterly, completely alone. And I feel, um, just speaking my, my perspective, uh, in my own context, I can understand. And I've, I felt this way at times. And I'm sure those who are listening, those who are watching, can also agree that they felt this way. They'll be around a lot of people in proximity. Um, the numbers are there, but you feel more alone than you did when you were by yourself. Speaking of which, the environment can play a role, a huge role in someone's overall stability. You know, um, I think sometimes the big hurdle is the ability to pause. Um, there's always this level of urgency, at least what I've seen and I felt personally, to go and get and achieve these monumental steps. Let's say the individual is 20 or mid 20s. Oh, I'm so old. I should be here. I should be there. And, um, Sometimes those expectations, at least what I find, can be problematic and can actually be barriers in themselves. I love what this African proverb says. If you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Uh, it, it's the idea that we in ourselves as adults find it very hard to say those three words I, I mentioned in the beginning. I need help. It is extremely hard, and depending on the cultural context and your what is going on, uh, what is the expectations. Um, I remember while I was doing when I got married, part you know we did the generic. Um, I say, um, you know, when they say through sickness and through health, um, the. The richer and for poor. A lot of times we don't really think about what that means. Um, I would like to say, I would love to kind of be able to be on it. You know, a lot of times I feel very blessed with the type of work I'm doing today. I do enjoy the type of work I do today. I do find it odd that, you know, I do connect well and I do enjoy it. However, I am just one person. And sometimes um, there be there might be blind sides where I don't realize that I may need to ask this question. I need help. Um, it's not the idea of if you're able to do it or if you could do it yourself. I feel sometimes we forego our self care because oh, if you if you want to do it right, do it yourself well you know for me I, I find i understand that sentiment but if you're foregoing your own self-care if you know that will, eventually what i've seen what i've experienced it will cost you nothing is kind of free if you're if you're bleeding on empty and you're you're not trusting of anyone around you to ask these three questions um i i some may think that it's strong. Some may think, oh, I'm being, you know, I'm not being a burden. Um, but also, you're not being very kind to yourself. Eventually, um, 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 it can catch up on you. Um, so, being able to know your limits sometimes is one of the most freeing things. I know at times I just need to step back. Um, I am maybe very proficient in certain areas, but I, I also know that I do my best work when I slow down. Um, there's this one uh, word uh, from South African words, uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. Uh, it's, it's, I do like this idea, it's roughly translated, human kindness, is that yeah, I find worth in you and you find worth in me. Obviously, it's this ideal scenario, but... Um, when I meet someone, or if I know someone, or even someone very close, a friend, um, there's a lot of context that I realize that I don't know. Uh, even if I don't agree with whatever actions, or maybe I just, maybe I'm older, or, or just don't want to understand, 
I think there's a difference between kindness. I think we, we've, I've talked about this recently with other guests. I, I think the word nice, even though we use it and I still use it, um, is just too broad and doesn't really specify what it means. And sometimes I feel when I'm being nice, it's conditional for the idea of me um, to be more advantageous for my own circumstances. Well, in other words, I'm being nice so I have less disturbance with people in my life, which in hindsight, looking back, it seems a little bit dishonest. So if a friendship is not going very well, and instead of addressing it because I value that friend, I instead be nice to avoid any conflict. But I do like this kindness, this, this acceptance. You know, uh, um, it's, it's not for me to be in other people's business, but at the same time, understanding that there's a lot of context, just like there's ones, there's con uh, context in my life that people um, won't understand even if I told them. And then it's a, it's a large kind of idea to kind of think of. Um, uh, but when I was really struggling, when I was you know, thick, um, a long time, I say several years, I tried to have my family, people I know close to me understand, and I began to become a little bit bitter because none of them really understood, but then I asked myself, why do I need them to understand? Sometimes, a lot of times in life, it's a miracle that we can even communicate even effectively um but i i i realize these things and i'm not too hard on myself because i but i learn from them and you know we're talking about you know one more day and some of these maybe not indirect things that i've learned help me have that one more day in my life uh lao tzu says Life can only be understood backwards, but must be lived forwards. So there becomes a time of understanding, of reflecting, but there is also the being present for today. I asked this to some of my, my guests, um, well, the one uh, last Tanya, but it's one thing I like to ask is what do I think society can understand as we navigate forward regarding recovery and what have, have I seen or experienced that has worked well I'm going to ask answer the second one what I have I seen or experienced well what has worked is a more client focused approach um, I work in the mental health field a lot of times um I, I think the, the idea of understanding what is wrong with someone or even yourself and getting diagnosis can be comforting, but it, it's not it's not a, a solution because a lot of those um, a lot of those times um, it can actually slow people moving forward. Um, uh, I feel diagnosis is very helpful and it is encouraging in knowing what happens but it doesn't identify the individual who they are. So if, as we find it silly to say this in, in terms of medically, but if I have cancer, it doesn't mean that I'm no longer Robert, I'm cancer. Or if I had diabetes, I'm no longer Robert, I'm diabetes. But it's strange enough, if I have a mental health disorder, it, 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 it's a little different. So if I have bipolar, no longer am I Robert. I am Robert with the condition of being bipolar, if anything else. Sometimes bipolar just kind of overlaps who I am and my personality, my characteristics. And that can be problematic, um, especially in recovery. So um, I feel, you know, looking at how respond to diagnosis I, I feel um even those who are who are who are receiving treatment those who are 
working with those and the, the families surrounding them you know the person is still that individual that's one thing i've experienced work a little bit better um obviously um therapy uh, methods and you know being um being open with your um, mental health provider being as honest as you can be if the medications are not working to ask or say or tell them um, you're not helping the person working with you you're not making them less feel bad they're just not able to help you if you're not asking or telling them that these are the situations and what do I think society can understand about navigating forward regarding recovery is um, um, you know, we're, we're a lot more forgiving with uh, medical disabilities or med- medical issues and they are inconvenient you know um, sometimes mobility becomes a factor because or something sometimes certain other aspects um, become harder now um, we understand these these generally we understand this so if someone loses the ability to be mobile uh, it becomes problematic and we think about ways of how to help that mobility and one thing i was talking about with my wife and just thinking from all myself is um people who are born blind or deaf one of the main one of the major priorities that is usually presented is how does how do i communicate with this individual so uh it, the problem is worked um a lot of times when it comes to uh recovery when it comes to either substance use or we're talking mental health uh, the approach changes um, and the, the, the information or the approach becomes more um, can become more um, problematic towards treatment um, and it's not because yeah unfortunately a lot of times when it comes to mental health or even substance use there's usually tied into it sometimes some legal issues now when I'm thinking about how do we, how do I think that na- uh, society can understand as we navigate? Well, I think when we put so much power on the idea of what a diagnosis is, it, I, I feel that that can overshadow the, the person himself, herself, um, whoever that individual is, because ultimately, um, one of the biggest complaints I've heard um, doing groups, working the field I work in, even my own experience is not feeling heard. And um, I think as a society, um, as, as, as we look at illnesses as illnesses and there are certain treatments and model types, um, and you know we sometimes get second opinions if we don't agree or things are not working we're 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 open to looking at other avenues i would like society to kind of have the same approach when it comes to um, areas of mental health and substance use if it's uh it's being that proactive Um, um unfortunately um the patience or the motivation or both uh, is this feels disproportional compared to other illnesses when it comes to medically. If I, if I, if I had, um, if I had severe diabetes, I'm not taking care of myself. You know, yeah, there's people who avoid, but eventually the person will will, will see it as not um, see it as see it as something that needs to be addressed now granted um um when i'm thinking about societal not just the person suffering i think um uh the the differentiating of what the illness is and what the per who the person is i think is is done more uh 
more appropriately when it comes to medical conditions versus substance use or mental health. And because of that, I feel traditionally it does create its own barriers. A person may have a granddaughter who is bipolar and person, you know, they don't understand it. And instead of um, um, finding, uh, finding other terminologies or finding other ways to approach or to talk or to hear from this individual, um, a lot of times it is, um, a lot of times pushed to the side. Now, is that always, I know that we are as a society now in in this country, but in other countries are trying to make it more self-aware. But I think, um, I think defining and the approach of understanding and recognizing that individual, um, going back to, um, creating environments where the individual can ask the question, I need help. Um, and that, um, that even though their illness is inconvenient there's, and, and can be um, something that um, be disruptive to a family environment or unit, um, I just feel that the old, old ways of approaching it hasn't been that beneficial. And the old ways is pull yourself from the pull yourself up, you'll figure it out, dust it off. Um, If that was the case, I will feel the numbers will, would, um, um, I feel the numbers will be different. Um, Personally, I feel that um, that distance, even at the very least, that distance, that 10 foot pole kind of approach to someone who is suffering that you don't understand um, can in itself uh, hinder that individual's view of themselves and possibly um, uh, ability to find or even have a motivation to get better. Now, this is just from my experience, from what I've experienced and what I've seen. This is not total and exact fact because everyone has their own context, but I think if we at least approached mental illness in the same light as we approach medical illnesses and not attach someone's character or value towards that diagnosis, which in turn, if the the person suffering doesn't feel the same way, then um, if the medication stopped working, doesn't mean that the person is is not a good person. and uh, I feel like the, the saying out loud like that sounds obviously fundamentally um, incorrect, but there is this, and there is this kind of distance when we think about um, these topics of how we understand things. And as as someone who who spent many years trying to have their closest family understand, I f- I feel. Sometimes that defining um, that defining um, how someone feels um, can only be most effectively done by the person who's feeling it. So um, I think someone who broke their leg <laughs> um, may say, "You don't know how I feel with this pain," and. Quite honestly, the individual who doesn't have their leg broken at that time would not assume that they do. They could say, well, I've broken my bone before, but, you know, given that the pain is very visual and very present, um, there is a lot, a lot of times to be more of an understanding and empathetic heart. I would hope, um, not in totality, but as we, as we go into 2023 into 2024 they're reminded that at the very least that the individual is still the individual um when we when we attach diagnosis so hard on the individual's total character and value um accountability becomes harder to follow through 
because no longer it's the person's decisions or choices, it's the illness, it becomes disproportional and the expectations are all over the place at times. And so for me, what I've seen work best when we look at these things is first be kind. Um, remember the individual, Susan, James, whoever they are, they're still them. They're just suffering. They're just struggling. Um, and we all have made mistakes in our lives, if we're really being honest. And if we're able to admit is some of even some of the medical um, diseases out there that may prevent someone to be mobile, you know, it is hard. You know, helping other people is inconvenient. But what makes it important, what makes it special is the individual not what they're diagnosed with how would i like recovery month and um world suicide day be to be remembered in 2023 I, you know I, I meant that this month's theme is one more day so i remember this quote um paraphrasing from martha luther king jr he said you don't have to see the full whole staircase to take the first step so um, if someone's struggling and they're ha they're depressed, they're having symptoms that you never understood, or you know, you, maybe you're um, maybe you just don't understand, or you don't have the time to understand, or you're just frustrated with other things. Um, what I like people to remember is that remember the individual who is asking for that help you know maybe you can't help all of it maybe you don't know what to do and that's okay you know, um, I would say those who are struggling also to be kinder to those who you're telling asking for help um, because quite honestly it, 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 it is hard to see loved ones hurt so if, if the parent grandparent whoever is with you doesn't know what to do find someone who can help um if a person has a broken leg as i mentioned previously you would go to a doctor you would get someone to see you and s fix that broken leg to gain mobility and get back to recover i feel if we look at when it comes to recovery or World Suicide Day in the same line, I feel it, it's the small steps towards a staircase that maybe society doesn't know what's up there. But if we remember the individuals that are involved, it doesn't matter. Recovery Month, as I was, you know, I've been mentioning a lot about World Suicide Day, um, but with recovery, you know. Statistically, a lot of people do fall off the bandwagon. So they may have taken six months sobriety or 10 or 12 years being sober. Those are just numbers. The fact of the matter is that the person's alive and has been trying to better their life. So if they slip up, I, I feel that even though we want the the, the family, the loved one wants to get them back on. I think it, we need um, to remember that that they asked for help, you know, and and, and that even though those milestones of 10, 20, 30 years sober are impressive, what really matters is the individual still here today. So. Be kinder to yourself, those who are struggling with substance use, who are trying to walk away from it. But also be kinder to those who you're trying to be, uh, those who, be kinder to those friends, family members who are struggling with this, you know. Um, and I, I hope that in whatever culture, context, family, and environment, that there is an avenue, at the very least, that you can ask the question, that individual will feel comfortable asking that I need help. Now, help uh, is 
not these high five moments that oh these feel good moments of helping the individual help is literally help and sometimes help comes in the most inconvenient times but if we at least from from my experience what i would like to see happen is that we don't dehumanize each other but we humanize it so the even though it is inconvenient we remember that we're doing it because we care about that loved one that friend that coworker so how would i like recovery and world suicide day to be remembered but remember to never to to remember the individual and why we're even doing this because it matters because the person who he or she whoever that is is you know um and i i think as we are poor at remembering um a lot of times the good things um and we may just focus on the negative things i i do hope that as we um each year remember you know world cancer day in february we we'll remember these monumental things cuz it's human nature a lot of times to forget but it's easier to remember when we remember the individual itself like person who may n- never been exposed to uh mental health in their life and then their granddaughter or daughter is suffering and that may be overwhelming and you want it to be quickly handled quickly and promptly however i would encourage those who are watching those who are listening to um though the practical aspect of understanding some what is wrong and what is, is is happening to the son or daughter whoever um is important to not lose sight of who that individual is the theme of this month again is one more day tribute to recovery month and world so said what do you think this theme means to you today is that when we humanize individuals i do feel there's a possibility that um a person may feel confident comfortable to ask for help and it doesn't mean that the family member or friend will know what to say or even know what to do uh and that's where i encourage you to find professionals find be with that individual walk to that individual to the hospital be there because at the end of the day sometimes people just need one more day um well, just, you know um and i'm just not well, this month um also when i think about this theme it means to me that um we're really getting to the derivative of why we even care about these two topics if no one in the world had mental illness no one will talk about mental illness or if no one ever was never took substances or never died from an overdose we would not talk about these topics but we talk about them because the individuals who may not be here today the individuals who are struggling today are family members their wives husbands sons daughters and i i this theme um that's what um that's what i was thinking behind it one more day is something you would say to someone you know someone close to you just one more day and i i feel um that's what i would like people to remember when it comes to this month final thoughts that well not you but final thoughts i have um just be kinder um to those around you um those who are struggling um find ways to improve on your environment and it doesn't mean that you get a new place it doesn't mean that you avoid or it doesn't mean stuff it means sometimes just to communicate and maybe it just means to find ways to say i need help um 
talk to a professional, maybe seek out uh, what benefits maybe you're able to participate in. Um, those um, be proactive. There's final thoughts. Um, family members, uh, you're just one person. Um, it's an overwhelming problem. So I would encourage you to take care of yourself also. Um, and, if you, and if you don't know, find, find someone who can help. Um, and uh, at the very least, remember that, that this individual, this whole situation matters because of the individual, not because of the actual mental illness. Because um, that is why um, this topic is very hard for a lot of us. And I just want to say thank you for all of you who are who've been listening, those who've been guests. Those um, I encourage you to continue to. Um, yeah. You know, remember, um, especially those who um, well, it's easier for those, in some sense, to remember. Especially if if mental health or substance use has touched you. But if you if you come to this channel and you never drank or never did anything, and you're you know, you don't know much, you just heard about suicide, and you just don't understand it. Um, just be kinder to those who are around you. Uh, it's easier. E it's easy to, to say the should ofs to those around you, just because you're like, "Well, I didn't. I didn't do that because I did this and this." But you're erasing the context of the individual, and in, in some ways, you're dehumanizing the other person's context. Now, is did the person make the right choice? Maybe not. But at the end of the day, um, I think I think when we remember this month, it's not to remember just those who we've lost, even though not to minimize. And not just to remember how hard it is for those who are still, um, um, still struggling, those families, those people who are struggling today, but also to remember the why we're even doing this. Um, and I feel that Remembering the why um, reminds us of people around us and how they matter. So I do encourage those who may not be touched by any of these um, areas, whether it's substance use or mental health, to just be kinder to those around you. Um, and I just want to say thank you for those who are listening, who have been listening. Uh, um, to wrap things up, I remember to stay updated with Revive Emergency through various platforms. RevivalEmergencyFL.com is our website. This is goodbye from Revive Emergency Podcast. Let me last quote. Um, it's from Juliet Lewis. She said, The bravest thing I ever did was continuing my life when I wanted to die.